going to get you started with crayon tinting. You're going to need some tools. Uh, the first thing is, of course, um, the fabric that you're working on. The only thing I can say about the fabric you're working on is uh, it will determine what size pen you uh, trace with. If you have linen, something rough, you're going to need probably a 05 pen. Um, this is a real good quality Moda muslin and it I'm using a, an 01 pen. You could even use an 005 pen and it is a Micron Pigma pen and brown. You don't want to use black, don't want to use red, even if you're doing red work because it'll just show up if you, if you make a little mistake. It's hard to cover up. Uh, the next thing it's nice to have is, this is my favorite brand. There are other mounting putties out there, but this is Loctite Fun Tac Mounting Putty. And you can find it at craft stores, hardware stores, even like the, the grocery store sometimes. It's for putting posters on the wall and things like that. It acts as, a, as an eraser to take the crayon off the fabric if you have a mistake or if you want to highlight even. Um, I, for all my patterns, I go off of this 64 count uh, box of crayons. It's the basic crayon set. Doesn't have all the little neons and metallics and sparkly stuff in it. And that way you're guaranteed that the colors that I call for in my patterns are going to be in the box of crayons that you buy. Also, I like to have a, a nice little, um, um, well, it's a pencil sharpener, crayon sharpener. The bigger hole is for the crayons. And uh, just to keep, you know, every now and then keep a nice uh, point on your crayon if you need it. So I start by tracing. And then you want to uh, either, if it's a few hours away that you're going to be coloring it, you can go ahead and just, um, just let it air dry before you color, but if you're going to do it immediately, I would like to heat set with a, a hot iron, just to a hot dry iron, just to dry the ink so it doesn't smear when you put on the white crayon. I put a white crayon on. I've already colored the white on most of this thing, but I am going to finish up here. Um, the white crayon I just kind of stumbled on. I didn't like the way I was, I was testing out crayon tinting and I didn't like the way it was turning out. I thought it looked very kind of cheap actually, uh, crafty, craft style, like a little kid did it with sme um, not smears but uh, streaks and it just didn't look the way that I wanted it to and it was coming out really dark and I thought well maybe I can tone that down with white crayon like you would white paint and it didn't work because the white disappears when you heat set it. So that was a that was a bust, but it kind of made a little light bulb go on that it, it acts kind of like gesso. Let's put it on the back so that the, the crayon that you put on, the colored ones, can just kind of float on that surface, a nice smoother surface rather than right on the the fabric. The fabric's actually very rough, even if it seems like it's real smooth, it's very rough and um, it'll just grab that crayon immediately. And what we're trying to do is slow that process down so that you have a little more wiggle room, um, time to work on it. I'm gonna start with these leaves down here. Um, something, I, I, I like to put down a tint layer. I call it tinting and shading. The tinting I think of as more of a pale, all over color or leave some white showing, leave some background showing for a highlight. But this I'm going to do an all over and you can see I'm using a very light hand and I'm using a circular motion. If you get this motion going, the scrubbing motion, you're going to end up with streaks even with the white on, on there for a primer. And we don't want streaks. So a light hand and there's that green on there. Now I'm going to come in. I, I usually will give um, up to three shades, sometimes even more, 
uh, for one process. The lightest would be the tinting. The medium tone would be for shading. The darkest tone would be also for shading. So I've already used this one for the light tinting. Now I'm going to use the medium tone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and shade where these leaves overlap. So you just want to use common sense, look at it, and ask yourself, what is the farthest thing back here? What's behind? This leaf here is obviously behind this leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and where this leaf is overlapping this leaf, I'm going to shade at that edge. And you want to use pools of color. You never want to just follow the lines that are in the, that are traced. So there I've shaded that. And you can already see that this leaf looks like it's in front of this leaf. Light comes um, forward and dark will recede. So that'll help you with your shading. With this one, I just want to leave this edge that's overlapping this darker area. I want to leave it lighter. And then I'm going to come in and I can really do anything I want with this leaf. So I'm going to shade in a pool in the center here, like so. Then I'm going to come in with my darkest color. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did. I'm going to accentuate the fact that this is sitting behind that other leaf and behind that flower. And there's actually a piece of lint in there. And then I'm going to shade underneath where this flower is sitting on top of that leaf and down in the center. So you can see that this looks like it's behind. This looks like it's in front. And if I wanted to, I could accentuate that even more with a little bit darker in, in here and in here. You'll find when, you're, um, when you stitch something that's been crayon tinted, that the stitching will make the color pop. So you don't really need a huge amount of color laid down. Um, it will look very, it can look very pastel. And once you stitch on it, it will look much darker. Now I'm going to do this flower. I don't know what color I should make him. So I think he's going to be orange. I'm going to come in with this orange and I'm going to do the petals on this. Very pale. In that little circular motion and I'm doing an all over tint. And I'm, there's a glass here. It's covered up by glass. I'm going to do in here too because it'll show through the glass. You'll see. We'll make it look like the glass is on top of it. And now I'm going to come in with a darker orange and I'm going to uh, start shading this. And I think I'm going to come in from this way rather than the outside. I'm not going to cover the whole area when I'm shading. I'm just going to make these little pools of color to give it some shape. And because it would be boring to watch me do this entire thing, I'm going to not do absolutely every element in this little thing. I am going to do the glass though. First I'm going to show you how I would do the straw to make it look round. When I do um, white, when I shade white, I usually use tumbleweed, the tumbleweed crayon, and just do, um, just use it very pale as a shade. So I'm going to come in very lightly on the edges of this straw on every other stripe real quick. It's not a, a real hard thing to do so you can go rather quickly. Now I'm going to do the pink stripes and I'm going to start by coming in on the edge on one edge like so. 
and then I'll come in on the other edge like this and since that's pink on the end I'll do that pink I'm just well yeah I'll just do that part now I have a little bit darker pink and I'm going to just accentuate the shading on this a little bit and it will make that straw look rounded because I'm shading it where it would be curving toward the back like so see I could keep going with the bottom of the straw but I'm not going to now I'm going to work on these um, ice cubes that are in here. I'm going to use a robin's egg blue for it. I'm going to be very, very pale, very pale. And at this point, what you probably want to do is you probably want to look at the pattern and um, see what had been done on the pattern uh, cover. And sometimes we put it on the inside of the cover if there are larger images. And it'll help you. See how I put that behind this ice cube and it made it look like this one sitting in front? It's kind of magic. This one sitting in back. This one, let's put it up here in just a little bit. You don't want it to completely cover anything. You're just hinting at that, hinting at that aqua on those ice cubes. Now that they're in there, I'm going to come in and I'm going to show you how to do a larger area. We're going to do this glass and it is curved also. I'm going to use the same aqua and I'm going to come in and just run it along the rim a little bit and you want to keep everything pale. If I have any hint at all for doing this shading of large areas, it's that I like to use See how I'm going right over the orange? It's because the glass is going over the orange. I like to use these kind of uh, asymmetrical, uneven, triangular shapes when I'm shading. I find it gives a, a nice look. Anything, if you had a hard edge when you're shading, it would just look so fake that uh, it would ruin it. And now I'm going to put lemonade in this glass because this is lemonade. And I think I would keep it away from the edges a little bit because it will turn this blue green, which is fine a little bit, but you just want to just barely get some in there so that it sticks a suggestion that that is lemonade in that glass. So you can see how that works. I'm going to show you how to how I would fill in this ribbon. It's a larger area and it'll give you more of an idea of that that triangular um, the triangular shapes coming in to fill the larger area. And I'm going to use tumbleweed because it's very monotone, so it'll really, it'll show you what I'm doing. All I'm gonna do is first, this, once again, you keep in mind, what's the farthest thing back? This area back here is the farthest thing away from me. So I'm gonna come in, and I probably should have sharpened my crayon a little bit, but it'll be fine. Come in and do that. And I'm going to shade behind where this is overlapping, right here, and just put a hint here and there. If this was a color, it would be the same idea, you, you know, a color like pink or lavender or whatever. Now this is my second area right here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to leave that edge a little bit so that it still shows up farthest toward, well, closest to me would be this area right here. So I'm going to leave just a little edge here, but I still want to show that this is curved. So I'm going to come in up here 
and show the edge and then kind of veer off from it a little bit down here. And now I'm going to go into those irregular triangular shapes. And I know I'm putting very little on, but that's what you want to do. You want to get very little on and then come in and add more afterward because you can always add more, but it's a little more difficult to take it away. I could shade a little bit more with this crayon or I could come in with a darker shade and accentuate this. So it really starts to show that it's 3D and when you stitch it, it will accentuate it even more. So there's that. If you had a great big huge area, say great big huge witch's hat or something, you wouldn't want to color the entire background because it would look flat. You just want to do these irregular asymmetrical triangular shapes coming in and it will give you the result I think you want. Um, I'm going to show you how this mounting putty works. Let's just look right through here. Let's say I didn't like that. You don't want to rub. You want to tap and pull it away and keep turning your mounting putty so that you have clean spots and you see that it takes it off. There's very little that this won't take off. I, f I have more trouble with greens and yellows than I do with anything else actually with this. Um, the next thing you would do is once you were completely done and you were happy with it, you'd want to heat set it. All right, we're the ironing board. My iron is on linen and it's dry. There's no, uh, not going to be any steam. And uh, I have a white paper towel here. So I'm going to put it down over my colored area. What's important is you're not going to, uh, you're not going to scorch your fabric as long as you have a paper towel here. So keep your iron on the paper towel because you're going to be holding it down for quite a while. And all I'm going to do is hold that on there. And you want your, you want it to really heat up because you're melting the wax away is what you're doing. I've heard people say that you can do this with freezer paper, but I just don't understand where the wax goes if it's going on to shiny freezer paper. So this is the way I do it. Hold it down there really, really well. Let it get nice and hot. Usually you can smell crayon. And I can smell crayon right now. So I'm just going to make sure that is over the entire area that I've colored. And really, really hot. And then all I'm going to do is peel that off and look at it. And I have a little bit of brown on here. So I'm going to throw this away. Actually, what I do is I recycle them and I use them to clean. I'm going to get a clean one. It's just important that you don't reuse the same paper towel because you can transfer color. And then I'll just repeat the process. And when I'm done, which I'm going to just for time's sake, I'm just going to say I'm done. I'm not going to give that the full time I normally would. And you can see that the uh, it doesn't change where you've put the color at all. Like it doesn't smooth the crayon out. It doesn't change it, but it does make it uh, transparent. So now where where all these lines have gotten a little milky because they had the white well all the crayon on them. Now the lines show up again because all that's left is now pigment. Um, at this point, you can. You can wash it. I don't suggest doing something that you need to wash all the time, but you can wash it as long as it's cold water, gentle wash or hand wash and um, very, very gentle soap. 
I use, I've used woolite on my quilts and I've used uh, baby, you know, baby, I can't think of what it's called, but baby laundry soap. And that's all there is to it. It's very much fun and I hope that you try it. Thank you.